Hi everyone, my name is King IV and this is Introduction to SQL Server. In this case, what we'll be doing is actually learning just how to write queries using the SQL or SQL. And currently I'm using SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio, which is based out of SQL Server Express 2014. And this is really meant to learn how to extract data, not necessarily or not at all, how to maintain, update, or perform those any, anything else that actually requires you taking care of the, the SQL Server or creating new tables. What we're really interested in here is how to extract data uh, from a data analyst or data scientist point of view uh, from, from your IT or from your engineers. So let's go ahead and get started. The fun fundamentals of a SQL Server query or SQL query is these two uh, functions select and from select will tell you what columns you want to select and then from will tell you what table do you want to select from so in this case if I'm looking here and I have for example the customer database so here I want to go DBO we don't need to do DBO yet Let's say customers right here and if I expand this here I'll see that there's four columns. Maybe for example I only want customer ID and first name. So what you'll notice here is that uh, when it had multiple field names I had to put a comma in between. Let's go ahead and run that. So we run that you'll see the results down here and how long it took. It didn't take any time actually at all and the number of rows that exist in this database. So you see uh, quite, quite a few rows. Uh, pretty simple. If I want to add in more I could add in for example middle Initial, I could even break this out to the second line. I'll just do this. And I'll just press F5 to rerun it. And you'll see here now middle initial is included as well. And it's null for, for some instances. Okay, perfect. So nothing too complicated. If I want to include them all, all I have to do is replace everything. Just go select star from cus customers. So run that, it's going to include all the car columns in that particular table. But now what happens if I only want to include a subset of rows? So I only want to include, for example, uh, maybe for example, I only want to include Aaron, first name. So in this case, I would go where first name is equal to Aaron. Oh, Aaron. And then you'll see here, there's only 55 rows with Aaron. Okay, that's good. Maybe I want to include everything that's not equal to Aaron. So you see here, now I have 19,704 rows. It's pretty quick, fairly quick. Obviously, this is not a complicated uh, database, and it's not that many rows, but still fairly quick to go and filter around your results. If, for example, maybe I want to include everything that starts with an A, uh, starts with an A. There's a number of ways I could do it. I could do I could do a left here and do one is equal to A as an example. I could do it that way or and that's what what that does there is it starts at the left and goes for one character. But the way I actually prefer is to do it this way with the like statement and then do the percent sign which is kind of like a wild card. So I'll say Give me all the first names that are like, it starts with A, and then has some other components afterwards, or no components afterwards. And then you'll see here we have 1,996 rows available. Okay, that's good. Um, let me just get rid of this. And maybe, oh, for example, I want to include just two names. So I could go first name is equal to Aaron or first name is well, that's not very efficient so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use this function called in and then I'm gonna say Aaron comma let's find another name Brett now I have 77 rows you'll see Aaron and Brett here so the in function basically says 
allows you to do a group of different options, matching options that are available. So, so that's good. That's that's handy. And for example, if I want to include multiple options, normally I would include in one line. Like I, for example, I go and last name. Uh, let me just break the second line. Last name like quotation percent oh single percent uh, y there you go so that'll tell me all the ones that end with letter y if i want all the ones that that contain the letter y i basically do the percent sign on both sides which say give me all all options where there's a y somewhere in the text okay perfect so or as well I could do an or option, which would give me all the ones that meet this condition or meet this condition. As before, as opposed to before, it had to be Brett or Aaron and had to have a Y in it. Oh, okay. Okay, that was weird. Uh, anyway, so now you'll see here it includes not only Brett and Aaron, but everyone that also includes a Y or Brett and Aaron. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and let's look at another. Let's look at the customer ID and filter from that way. So, for example, maybe I, will, for example, only want all the customer IDs that are greater than one hundred. Pretty simple. What happens if I want them all less than one hundred? Okay. Let's see, I have 99 here. Maybe I want to include 100 as well. So then go less than or equal to. Or maybe I want to include less than or equal to greater than. You can do it that way. Or if I want to just equal to 100. What happens if I wanted, for example, every number between 100 and 1,000 as opposed to everything greater than 100 or everything less than 1,000? I could, for example, just do... If I'm assuming it's inclusive, I can do customer ID this way and go less than or equal to 1,000. And then you'll see here I have 90, 901 rows because it's inclusive. But that seems a little bit inefficient. Like, why do I have to do it that way? Is there a better way? And the answer is yes. And as well, this is a little bit harder to read, especially if you had many other uh, where statements that filtered it. So here we go in be between, it would say 100, 100 and 1,000 you'll see here and it, it is as well inclusive so something you have to take into consideration and factor in okay so that, that seems useful um, let's go ahead and and look at some other tables so for example here I have sales and you'll see here the sales database is uh, fairly large it's not even actually completed running even though we're not doing anything too complicated yet I think it's like 560,000 rows so in this database, you'll see a number of different options that are available. So you'll see here, I have customer ID, I have product ID, I have quantity, I have salesperson ID, and I have sales ID. But you notice that these are just numbers because these are, are referenced, the actual full details reference, you'll see here, this is 6.7 million lines. So it's fairly large. So you'll see here that these are just IDs and the actual full details is referenced in the customer, employee, and products databases. So let's go ahead and do a join here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take sales and I'm going to put this identifier in front of it, dbo dot. And this just lets me know that it's coming from uh, this particular database engine in case you had multiple ones, which I, which I don't in this case, but it's also useful to know. The, to, to, what I want to do is I want to also include the details from the other databases, other tables. So here I'm going to go, I'm going to put an A, and that's just going to let me know, short form, that I'm referring to this table, particular columns. And I'm going to do a left join, dbo dot, I'm going to start with employees, B, I'm going to put the letter B, and I'm going to say join on salesperson ID is equal to, so A dot salesperson ID, so the salesperson ID from sales dot employee ID so give me all the ones where where there are are joined and do a left join so that means give me all the data regardless 
uh, whether or not uh, there there are any records in the employee database. I could also so that's probably the most standard one I use. Depending on, uh, we can talk further about other join options, but that's probably the most common one that I like to do. So you always start with the not always generally you would start with a larger table. So when we run this. Now you'll see here I have employee ID and you'll see employee ID and salesperson ID are, are the same. I have first name, I have middle name, last name. So a lot of really uh, great and useful details. And I can just keep doing some uh, some other joins as well. So for example, if I want to in include customer, you know, I do left join DBO customers. I'm going to call it C on a dot customer ID is equal to C dot customer ID. If I run that, I can't run it yet because it's still running here. I'll go ahead and write the rest of them as well. DBO dot products D on A dot customer. And you don't have to do A, you can make it, I could have made it sales, I could have made it employee, imp, unicorn, building, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, next one I'm going to run is I'm going to include product ID is equal to D dot product ID. I'm just going to double check that that's what it's called here. In this table. So you'll see it. product ID. And now when I run it, now I have all these different fields available. And then here I've selected star because I've included all the fields that, that I want to to view. I could also write a query to adjust it to only include the fields I wanted. So if I only want to include, for example, when you can't when you do it here, you can't just go salesperson ID because it won't know what table you're pulling from. So you have to go a dot salesperson ID, a dot sales, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We're gonna take a closer look at that in a, in a second. So you'll see here, because we're combining so many different tables and doing all these joins and 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 whatnot, it's actually taking quite a while to run. Like currently, we're on, we're almost done. So it takes about a minute to run. So is there a better way to dealing with this type of situation? And I'm gonna tell you the answer is yes. So what we can do here is do this option called create view. And what view does is it, it automatically takes in consideration all these con constraints and options that you've already identified and then puts them into a view, which is this temporary table or temporary view of, of the tables. So here we're going to create view. And I like to start my views. Best practice is to start with uh, VW, not the car manufacturer. VW and then the name of it. So I'm just call I'm gonna call this sales master. Master and go as. So okay. Here's the challenge I have now is uh, all the columns have to be unique and because there's customer ID and multiple tables and product ID and multiple tables. I'm going to go ahead and write out the field names and I'm going to fast forward through this now. Okay, perfect. So you'll notice here I did a couple things I hadn't shown previously. You'll see I have the as the name here. So basically what this does is they'll rename the column name because I already had a first name somewhere else. So because I've created this view, we're going to go over here and now you're going to see this view sales master. Don't worry about this VW test. That's why I, uh, when I was practicing and you're going to see here all these different columns that are now available. 
and all these different options that are available as well. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and create a new, a new query off this. So you see I have my other query right here. And I'm going to go select star, let me just zoom in, star from VW sales master. And then you'll see here how much faster it was actually to retrieve all this information that is available. Perfect. It's much faster and a lot easier to use. So whenever you can, um, obviously it's not done yet, but whenever you can try to create a view because it'll help speed up some of your analysis, speed up some of the that extraction. So I'm going to leave it there. There's going to be a few other options that I'm going to cover in the next lesson, including select distinct, order by, I'm going to cover some aggregation functions, including filtering using those aggregation functions. But be sure to make sure that you watch this lesson before you watch the next one. And I look forward to speaking to you next time. Thank you.